I'm very tired of speaking about social media and the insurance industry because I've done this for years. And I'm very tired because I see a few excelling, but a lot not even starting. And I'm not only tired, I'm actually also a little mad. And I'll show you in a minute why. I would like to introduce now our final keynote speaker of the day. Actually, Erika already mentioned some impressive numbers of his because he's an insurance influencer, if you can say that, with over 30,000 followers on LinkedIn, with 520,000 on TikTok and over 16 million likes. So uh, please give a warm welcome to Dr. Robin Kiera from Digital Scouting. Thank you, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. I will have a little warning for you because probably this is going to be the worst keynote you ever heard. And I'm going to break a lot of rules of public speaking by yelling at my audience, but please forgive me. Why is that the case? And I will also share why this is the case. This is the case because I'm very tired. I'm very tired of speaking about social media and the insurance industry because I've done this for years. And I'm very tired because I see a few excelling, but a lot not even starting. And I'm not only tired, I'm actually also a little mad. And I'll show you in a minute why. And my big question to you guys is, and why I'm super happy that you guys are here now, is are you actually <laughs> tired and mad of this situation too? And let me show you a little bit why did actually so little change. In preparation of my keynote, I went through my old keynotes. And what I saw there, I actually already started to talk about TikTok in 2020. I've been talking about the insurance industry and social media since five years. 2000, 2016 is not five years ago, but it feels like it. It's like almost 10 years. And I've been into TikTok since 2020. And that we should use it, that we should get in, that we should use it in order to get more contact points with our clients and excite our customers, that we can hire better people because they see us, how cool we actually are, yada yada. You have heard it all before. Yes, and I'm a little bit asking myself why so little actually change. Yes, and I could now do the rhetorical thing and say, who of you is actually happy with the visibility of your company? And nobody would raise his hands or her hand. Or I could ask you the question, who is happy with the amount of interaction with your company? And maybe one or two funny person would answer, actually, uh, who is happy with sales? And who would like not to sell more? Actually, probably nobody would raise his or her hand. And I, I think when we have also had talks behind the stage, I think nobody is happy with his or her reach of the companies we work for. And what's, what makes me a little bit mad and sad is that there are solutions actually out there. And it's not hard. It's not hard to get on the radar of the customer. It's not hard that they constantly see your logo and think about you. This is the case in B2B and B2C. It's not hard. It's super easy. It's doable. And uh, yeah, I can tell you a funny story about a client who I'm not going to mention later. We are going to mention others later. Is we had a, we had a client that was such a disaster that when we Googled his name, and it's an insurer, his name and his product that he was discovered on pa Google page 3 in his region where he was super active. So super outdated, disastrous processes, disastrous marketing, totally non-existent sync sales. And this player internally but also externally changed from a lag lagger to actually a leading player in his market. Also in marketing and social media. So suddenly the investors came and said to the CEO, oh my God, we really see the change. We see board members from other insurers and investors going then to these other guys and saying, oh, this is one of your companies I'm seeing constantly. You had suddenly tech partners coming around and saying, oh, let's do a pilot together. You are so modern. The HR was freaking out because they were suddenly able to hire people they were never able to hire before. They had no problems with actually getting apprentices, like young people wanting to work for the company. So it was suddenly rainbow and sunshine. And what, again, what makes me a little mad and sad is that it's doable, and to be quite honest, when we're really honest with each other, also for a ridiculous low budget. And uh, yeah, and we have done it several times, and I'm asking myself a little bit why don't do more. But I'm not only here to rant at you, I'm, I will also sh share a little bit how you can actually do it, how you can do it. 
One is, and, and you need to overcome three things, three beliefs actually, or four, I, I think it's four. One is TikTok is only for children and all the other social media things. TikTok you can replace. Then TikTok and short videos are only for fun and nothing for our company because, you know, we are serious. Then we only have five followers. We have no viral hit ever in a 150 year history, but we can do it ourselves. And I will share what to do and will share most of our secrets. Why am I allowed to say this? You shared already a few numbers. We have a large reach. We have built up an audience on LinkedIn, on Twitter, on TikTok, on other channels too. Maybe it's a coincidence or maybe we actually know what social media and how social media does. This is what we do, some of our clients. Let's go to the first hypothesis, TikTok is for children. And you can replace TikTok with YouTube Shorts, Instagram Reels and everything else too. Let's talk about one client. OC is a classical car insurer and they started and we started with them together TikTok in 2021. Now that everybody says it's of course, it's classical cars, everybody loves it, it's total easy to do videos about it. But when we started it was super hard because they said they have a target group of white male 55 plus. So something you don't identify with social media actually. But what we really quickly found when we created first short videos, and I will show you later, you saw the comments people did. You saw the, even though it was not able to see in the numbers of the channel that they're actually older people, you saw it in the comments, you saw it in the way the people wrote, you saw it in the construction of sentences that were people in their best years. And you saw it also in the, the technical knowledge they had and they comment, oh, this is not the model from 1972, but actually it's the model of 1971 last December day or something, because they really know their stuff. And the reality is they are now the leading channel in the German insurance industry on TikTok, reaching millions and millions of people. And with 100 people staff, they are beating Allianz, they're beating AXA, they're beating Ergo, they're beating everybody. And now the next question always a lot of people then asking, especially from those companies, is, yeah, but how many policies are they actually selling through it? And I cannot share that with you, but what I can share with you is the amount of money they saved if they would have aimed to get the same reach, if they would have aimed to get the same reach in traditional channels, they would have spent 25 million more. And this is a company of 100 people. If we would compare this with a regular insurer, it's billions in ad money that can be saved. Billions with a B, it's not a typo. And one more thing is, it's not only TikTok. It is short videos, it's content. So you can re-adapt, you can change it, you can put it on other channels, YouTube shorts, Instagram reels. Not all, but some. And what we have seen is millions and millions of other free views. And again, when their YouTube channel started, it's 109 followers, and now it's like one of the biggest in the industry. It does not matter what he says in German, but it's actually a signature content style. This sort of style going around a car or a motorcycle explaining something about it is now typical for these channels and others are actually trying to copy it. Why is this video with 1.7 million views? By the way, not one single cent paid an advertisement. 1.7 million people saw this content for free. Why is this went this so viral? Because in the first second, it's like a certain picture of this super rare bike. We start with something, oh my God, it's super crazy what you're going to hear. And not, this is the motorcycle something. So we really also try to sell a story. And this is why it is so successful. It's a story, but I come to other success sources later too. TikTok is only for fun. It's not serious. I can show you another case. In, uh, of course, we all know the dance videos, but TikTok is not that, that anymore. Another one is German family insurance. Super challenging case. Why public traded company? If you screw that up, you actually have a big problem with stock price and you don't want to have that conversation with the CEO. So super strong limits when it comes to creative stuff. Super strong brand, very traditional and very performance marketing based. So they are also asking the questions, how much money are we actually going to make with it? The reality is the second biggest channel now in the German insurance industry and they're reaching millions and millions of views and the faces they have are actually standing for insurance in Germany. And what that is a case for it actually that you not only can do with cars, actually talk about insurance policies, sell insurance policies and make advertisement for yourself, but actually with other topics. So what you do is he destroys a TV and it's really a TV that was destroyed and he they explain the complexity of the private liability insurance with that. They, because he, she says to him, oh, you cannot destroy a TV on purpose. Uh, it's actually not covered by your insurance policy. So it's a very complex topic, 
but it was shared actually in a very easy way to understand for the target group. And that's the challenge. The challenge is to find a format where you really can creatively transfer it. And yes, you can excite 10,000 millions of people with formally dry insurance topics. For example, like that example, I shared what was a household insurance, not the private liability insurance, I'm sorry for that. There's other funny, not funny, but serious topics that get driver. This other one is this guy, it's actually in English, we can show it. So it's about an administrative act to get into college or not. And what happens actually, he gets rejected by, I don't know, five different colleges and then Harvard accepts it and the internet freaks out. Why is this video a success? So it's very low production quality. It's probably made with a cell phone laying beside a loudspeaker. And it's sad because every person has been in that situation or at least can imagine a situation getting accepted of something or not. And of course, everybody is super curious, is he getting actually in any college or not? And then when he gets after five emails into Harvard, everybody's freaking out. So that's that. And we have also super complex tech topics. We, but that's not a video of us, just for transparency. And this video is actually also went viral. We talked, I thought, what is the most complex topic in the world, actually, we can prove that you even can reach normal people with it. So we came to quantum computing. I don't have actually a clue about it, so don't think that I'm smart, yeah? Um, and of course you can, if you, I would have discussed and described quantum computing and how it works, nobody in the world would have viewed it except maybe my mother-in-law. And, but we did it in a funny way. We said, what is actually the coldest place in the universe? And everybody can comment on that because everybody is working, is living in the new universe and can say, oh yeah, really, it's the coldest place in the universe? Or my fridge is colder, or your heart is colder. So a lot of people can engage with this, and it's also great for branding. One thing which you should not do, but I do, I also, on my private channel, on say my private channel, I uh, reveal coaches or gurus or scammers where I warn people that they're trying to rip off people. It's a little bit negativity. Negativity also, also very, works very well on social media, but as a company, I would not go down that road just as a tip. Then my most favorite prejudice is what it's a very bad audio, it's no lighting, it's not a person out of the target group. That's actually nice that they do it, that they try to get got inspiration by actually other good videos, but it's actually very, not bad made, but what should I say, it's just, it doesn't work, and I know it's 27 reasons why it doesn't work. Why? Because they do it themselves. It's, it's, it's sad. And what's even also sadder is, when, when a mutual insurer does it, that's okay. That again, we are talking about ridiculous budgets. If we'll analyze this in a technical way, it's they are present, they, they don't publish anything, even worse, they do performance marketing campaigns on TikTok and they just use TV ads. It's like the most horrible thing you can do in a native social media platform to actually upload old ads that don't work and then you push it with a lot of media spending down people's throats. Doesn't work there.